Love and Vincent is the first ever film to be entirely animated through the use of oil paintings. It is a film that is modelled around Vincent van Gogh's paintings and looks just like them. And honestly, it's just a spectacle to look at. So I was really excited when I got the chance to go and see this film in one of its film screenings, as well as attend a Q&A that happened directly afterwards with Hugh Welchman, who is one of the directors of this film. This is how Love and Vincent is made, with references from the director himself. Love and Vincent was initially thought up by Hugh Welchman's wife, Dorota Corbile. And sorry if I said her name wrong. She was really interested in Vincent van Gogh after having studied him in the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw. Devota and Hugh both had backgrounds in making animation movies, with them both mostly working on short films in the past and films to do with puppetry. But when Devota came to Hugh with this idea, Hugh decided to go and read loads of books about Vincent van Gogh, build up his knowledge and work towards starting work on Loving Vincent. Although this was the first ever feature film that both of them worked on, let alone in an entirely new way of animating through the use of oil paintings, so they did take their time with this, it took them 7 years to make the film. But the hardest part wasn't actually the making of the film, it was getting the funding to make the film in the first place. So this film was a huge risk. I mean, new directors and a new form of doing animation, obviously, may not lead to returns. So almost everyone was too worried to invest in this new idea, but they did manage to get funding from three different sources, with the first one being two wealthy individuals who were interested in Vincent and really liked his work, so they gave a bit towards it. They also had a Kickstarter campaign in which they raised £53,292 from 796 backers, and they also got some funding from the Polish Film Institute. And as for resources, they had the Van Gogh Museum that had lots of his paintings and stuff like that. When looking for paintings though, they wanted to look at the originals because they wanted to make sure that they get the colours right, because reproductions of paintings often don't have exactly the same colours. Although when they did have to use reproductions, they did just estimate what the colours would be. And then, once they had the story down and they had the funds available to them, the hardest part was over. Not to say that the rest of it wasn't hard though. I mean, getting the actors and artists was actually really easy. Lots of people really wanted to work on this project. And they actually managed to get actors that looked very similar to the characters that they were playing. I mean, almost indistinguishable. There's pictures at the end and they look almost identical. And then when they had the over 100 artists as well as the actors, they could get to work on actually starting to make the film. So creating the film actually was quite a long process, although animation usually is a long process. So they started off with storyboarding, as you'd imagine, and then they used these storyboards to create live action pre-visualization, in which they basically took the actors and they made them act out the scenes that they were going to be doing. And in the background, they created a set that looks like Vincent van Gogh's paintings, or they just put in a green screen and just basically replace the green screen with one of his paintings. And this was just there so that the artist would have reference to know what they're going to paint basically. In the live action shots they used a bit of CGI too, they put in CGI birds, other animals and clouds and stuff like that too. But everything was built around Vincent van Gogh's paintings and everything was made to look like them. But they had all of those paintings as reference and then they had that scene in the film usually but they built on the scene before and afterwards and they sometimes added in a few extra things like they added in characters and stuff like that that may not have been in the original painting. And then the actual painting could begin, so the over 100 artists got to work painting, and much to the delight of Hugh, the atmosphere was actually really nice. When he was doing puppetry in the past, he did sometimes have a pretty bad atmosphere, with puppeteers getting annoyed at each other and stuff like that, but the atmosphere was really nice with the painters. Even though the painters are usually used to working alone, they worked well together. And the way that the frames were actually painted was kind of different to how traditional animation is usually done. So usually in animation, there's different layers. So there'd be Celshi and then you'd draw a character on that. And then in the background, there'd 
well be a background. But when it came to this film, they decided to do everything on one layer, so everything was just painted, and then when they animated a character, they basically just erased that small part of him, and then they redrew it in the next frame basically, and then they just filled in the background again if the background needed filling in. And when I asked the director why he did it this way, he said that it wouldn't actually have been any easier using layers, and they felt like this was a pretty good way to go about it. And that's due to how they did the animation, with them just erasing parts of it and redrawing parts. And the exact same techniques were used for the black and white scenes too. These scenes though looked very different, and that's because they could actually smooth over the paint in these scenes, which gave it a very realistic look. And I actually thought some parts of it may be live action, but according to the director, the same techniques were used, it actually took 50% less time to make it in this way, and it looked really realistic still, but yeah, no live action. They did the black and white scenes, obviously to differentiate between what was happening at one point in time and what was happening in the past, in the flashbacks. And they also did it to give people's eyes a rest, because the rest of the paintings, the colourful ones, did get a bit intense at times, and were a bit hard in the eyes at some points. The only time that they couldn't use the same technique was when they were doing fast moving parts, such as the part at the beginning where basically the camera's panning from the sky to the floor. And for those parts they had to literally draw it, erase everything and redraw it over and over again, which did take a long time and I imagine would have been pretty stressful. Although there weren't many of those scenes so it didn't really matter too much. And then after each frame was made, a 6K image was taken of the frame, which was then to be used in the actual film. And at the end, 65,000 frames were made in total, which came up to 898 physical paintings at the end, because remember, they just used the same painting for multiple frames. But throughout the process, Dorota Corbila had to review hundreds of frames every single day, which was really stressful and did actually affect her mental health unfortunately. But other than that unfortunate fact, everything actually worked out really well and the final film's really good. It does justice of Vincent van Gogh's life as well as his work. And yep, that's how Loving Vincent was made. If you like this video, be sure to give this video a like. So I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.